And here we have um, Mia Masaoka. <laughs> Welcome back. We heard your beautiful performance earlier. So thank you so much for oh, joining us. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. It's so amazing to be back. I think the piece that I wrote for Bang on the Ken was like more than 20 years ago. So. That was a long time ago, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's nice to have you back. I'm, I'm thrilled. Thank yeah. you. Really nice. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about that instrument that you were playing? Because, you know, we know you as being the person who sort of takes the koto into all these different places. You make kotos out of lasers, you make kotos out of everything. So, but this one just seemed like one fine, tiny little wire. And what, what is going on with that? Um, well, I got, uh, I played kotos with a number of different strings, of course, the 13, the 17, the, the 21, the 25, etc. And then um, I, uh, Paulina Oliveras introduced me to Isui Minagishi, who is a master of the one string kota, the Ichigenkin. So I studied with her and I had a Fulbright and went to study no and study with her and Gagaku and a number of things. And um, learn some of the repertoire, which includes vocals. And I love the abstract quality of a one stringed instrument or a monochord because you can divide the octaves and the fifths and the relationships of the Pythagorean theory, everything is just so beautifully laid out and suddenly the universe makes sense, <laughs> sort of. Oh, so, please explain um, it to us. <laughs> <laughs> so this actually is a, a um, so sometimes it's, I use the term monochord because I have different ones that I use. I have um, ones that are electric and ones that are acoustic. Um, and a lot of cultures have one string monochords that African, you know, different uh, places in Africa one or have one strings. This is a Vietnamese instrument called the Dambao. 
And so I use diff I've kind of used different kinds of one string. They, they have a, sometimes they have a resonator gourd or sometimes there's another kind of resonator. Sometimes there's a plectrum, sometimes not, but you basically just have one string and that's, there's a beauty to this kind of completely constriction of materials. Well, how, how did you get, how did you get involved with the Kodo? I mean, it's really like, um, you know, I, I, I played, uh, you know, in a past lifetime. <laughs> I, I don't want to say I played, but I studied the Shakuhachi. And so I got into that whole, um, you know, ancient, um, early, early music, Japanese music thing. And um, how do you, how do you, how did you get into it? Um, well, um, my cousin played koto, grew up playing koto, and also my aunt played koto in my family, and I grew up playing, uh, learning classical piano. Um, so I, I was aware of it, exposed to it, and then I, f I found one, I uh, used one that was on sale at, at one point um, when I was early in college, and I became fascinated about the tactile. The, the way that you can feel the strings directly, this, you know, plucking and scraping and strumming. And it felt like um, the inside of the piano, kind of a, a, a Henry Cowell kind of thing, or different kinds of ways of thinking about the strings, these long strings. And so, um, and then I, I studied different, um, different traditions and ended up studying with the Sawai tradition the longest. Um, then it was also concurrent with starting the Gagaku Society in San Francisco, where I flew in the, um, th th those were the days when Southwest Airlines had $35 trips from Los Angeles to San Francisco. So I put together this organization and flew up the um, Togi Sensei, Suenobu Togi, and he's the, he was an imperial musician with the imperial court, uh, and he traces his family lineage in the Hichiriki, this reed instrument, more than 1,500 years in, in the back to China. So it's a really fascinating lineage, and he was this wealth of information, and it was amazing. Um, not only is your piece for the Bang on the Can All Stars on our archives, but um, we had we were we had the great pleasure of having Kazue Sawai um, come and play several times on the festival. Once with a, a group of seven kodos. And um, they so, were fierce. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! It was yeah, wild. It was wild. Yeah. Yeah. that's great. There's, you know, so we're we're we're. She's amazing. She's so incredible. Yeah. We're, yeah. yeah, I'm wondering what you're what you're working on right now um, during this time period. Oh, um, well, I I, I have a, a no opera that I'm that was um, canceled in the, at the Czech Republic with the Nodo Opera Festival, and that was working with no musicians, actors, and movement people, as well as uh, soprano and Western percussion. So that got postponed. It's called The Long Arc of Time. Um, I had an SEM uh, orchestra piece for the SEM that also got, uh, that was supposed to be, at, um, well, anyways, it got canceled, but hopefully it'll get, you know, reprogrammed. And I have a commission now from MPAC um, to do a multi-channel piece in this really amazing uh, acoustic environment. So a number of different things. You're busy. <laughs> busy, busy. Yeah. busy, busy, busy. <laughs> as well as going totally loony with everything, you know. Yeah. It's great. It's Craziness great. plus busyness equals question mark. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you jog around, you know, the apartment. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Knocking over lamps and... <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Mia. So oh, well, thank you so week. much. I thank you so much. You guys are my heroes, and it's so so awesome to be here. And so, thank you. Thank you. You well.